Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'd like to know what I can say to the enemies of Islam about Hazrat Aisha and her marriage to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu They bring up the fact that the Prophet was a lot older than Aisha radiallahu anha. How do I explain their age gap? There's nothing to explain about their age gap. There was an age gap. Are we going to apologize for it? No, we're not. Why do we have to apologize for it? If the Prophet والسلام, because their intention now is to show that the Prophet is Hasha is is a pervert, isn't it? He likes little girls. That is the intention, wrong intention. Don't even discuss with garbage people like that. Don't. Why should you? But if people are really sincerely wanting to know, that is something else. If the Prophet والسلام, his concern was that, his desire was that, the whole of Arabia belonged to him. Why only one? Hazrati Aisha, that he married at that young age. He could have married 10, 20, 30 at that young age, kept jariyas. But you look at all his wives, that's another issue, he, says he has so many wives. Oh, he put a limit to Muslim men to marry four, but he has 13. He's exception, they're saying, because he's because now people are dirty minded, garbage mind people. They're not understanding how the Prophet ﷺ, his marriage was a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. Number two, majority of the women that he married, starting from Hazrati Hatija, they were majority of them, they were old. They have been married before. Either they are widows, widows, okay? Or he is marrying them to take care of them. If it's for pleasure that he's marrying, you would have seen not one Hazrati Aisha, you'd have seen 10 or 20 or 30 of them. He's keeping like that. Which, if you ask them, look to your own Bible. How many wives Dawood had, King David? How many wives Solomon had? How many wives that the earlier prophets they had? So many. Hundreds. We're not saying anything. We're saying those are prophets. We cannot touch them. Whatever Allah allows them to have, there is a reason for that. You see, Muslims have respect for your prophets. Non-Muslims, they have nothing but insult not everyone. They have nothing but wrong things to say about our Prophet. So, no, Holy Prophet did not do that. If you look at the Prophet's life, the Prophet did not marry Hazrat Aisha as his first wife. Who was his first wife? A young lady? Did he marry his first wife, second wife, third wife, fourth wife within a few weeks, six months from each other, one year from each other? He was married to Hazrati Hatija, radiallahu anha, and she was 15 years older than him. 15 years older than him. He was 25, and she was 40. And he remained with her, one wife, until she passed away. On the 10th year of prophethood, a few years before the emigration to Medina, so we're talking 
decades he was with her because now when he got married at 25 the prophethood was revealed when he was 40 so 15 years another 10 years 25 years 25 years he was married to her one not two not three not five one Ah, so now you see when people are sincere they will understand or they will try to understand the context the situation when people have garbage intentions they will not take into context consideration the context the situation the surrounding uh, facts of that particular situation they will not they say it doesn't have anything to do with anything it has so many of his other wives they were old. He had to take care of them. And he is at the uh, top position of his power. He could have done that, but he didn't. And Hazrat Aisha, radiallahu an, radiallahu anha, she was betrothed to the Prophet, والسلام, and they were married. Yes. She was nine years old. The physical uh, situation of a woman, of a girl, at that time, 1400 years ago, is completely different from now. At that time, it was considered a woman. And he did not go and take uh, little girl from the enemies. Hazrat Aisha was the daughter of his best friend, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. And she was the only virgin that he married. The only virgin. Out of 13 wives, the only virgin where he could have had the whole of the women one he was offered women before he emigrated to Medina he was offered women by who? by the mushriks by the unbelievers they say stop your preaching Stop declaring, stop saying, stop making people to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Stop them, and we will give. We're talking about the nobility of the Quraysh. We'll give you all the women that you want. If you stop, we will give you all the women that you want that belongs to us, the high-born women. We will give you all the wealth that you want. Just stop. We will make you king. Just stop. He refused. They didn't offer all this to him when he's powerful. They offered all this when he was weak. Holy Prophet was never weak. But the mission was still very young. Was still very not strong at that time. They offered it to him when he was in Mecca. He refused. Which so many Muslims today, they may even be thinking, that was a wrong move. He should have become a bit more political, you know. To just marry the women, get all the wealth and become a king, then later renege on the promise and use that to make everyone to become a Muslim. But he didn't. Holy Prophet is teaching Muslims, m believers, how to behave, how to have honor. And what did he answer to them? He said, even if you give the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I will not stop saying shahadat and making people from saying the shahadat. And to the sahabi kiram, those high level ones, when the Prophet ﷺ did this, they saw the sun descend on his right hand and the moon descend on his left. Because in reality, as Sahib al Sahib, Shaykh Fandi Hazrat Lari said, the sun will not rise to the skies 
every morning unless it first goes to the feet of the Prophet and kisses the Prophet's feet before rising. And he had witnessed it. Ah, unbelievers, they see. Unbelievers, they need a million proofs and they will never believe. So, don't get too caught up with this. Out of everything of Islam, everything about the Prophet, 1400 years Islamic tradition, they squeeze it into this. Prophet married Hazrat Aisha when she was very young. Allah, Allah. Eh, what happened to these young ones in the free, democratic, western, free countries? Huh? Especially now, when they come to an age, quickly they lose all their innocence. Isn't it? What, we think we gained something living in this century? No, we lost everything. So, those who are looking uh, for truth, they are going to find it. This is also not something that although the Prophet did, everyone was rushing to do. Are there cases of people abusing this? Of course there are. As there are cases of people abusing Christianity or Judaism or anything else, or democracy or atheism or any other teaching. Are there people right now as we speak, they have child brides? Yes, they do. Is that something that Islam is encouraging people to do? No. People are going off. And they're using Islam to justify what their ego wants to do. It's not our fault. We don't care. Let them to deal with it. Allah is going to send a punishment to them. Because if it is something that is uh, encouraged, because the Prophet did it, you will see in 1400 years, everyone is going to do it. You don't see that. Very rare. And in these days, in only these remote parts where people, they haven't really come out from their uh, animal understanding of themselves, but they say shahadat and they pray and they're doing certain things, that doesn't mean it's coming from Islam or from the teachings of the Prophet if it was something that the Prophet encouraged, you'll see first every Sahabi do that. Did they do that? <laughs> you'll see the Tabi'ins do that, or the Tabi Tabi'ins. You'll see in 1400 years, everyone rushing, the men rushing, to get young girls to marry. Because Muslims have intelligence, they say that is exception. So, you need intelligence to understand spirituality, definitely. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.